You're listening to the Creatorpreneur Podcast, Episode 12. And today's episode, we're talking about how to communicate what you do and who you serve in 15 seconds or less. So stay tuned. Hello, my name is Rodney Washington, author, artist, and entrepreneur. And I'm passionate about helping creatives just like you do what lights you up and make a comfortable living while doing it. Each week, I'll be sharing timely business growth, marketing, and mindset hacks in interviews with courageous creative entrepreneurs to inspire you to get paid for your creativity. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy today's show. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by my free audio book and PDF, Get Paid for Your Creativity, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. To get your hands on a copy of the free audiobook and PDF, go to getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift. My original plan for this episode of the podcast was to do a deep dive on the book Choose by Ryan Levesque. Uh, my, my point was to do a continuation of the conversation starting in episode 11 of the podcast, three lessons from my first 60 days of running the podcast and how you can apply them to every project that you create. Now, if you haven't read the book, I highly, highly recommend adding it to your success library because the suggestions Ryan recommends, if if implemented properly, uh, will really help you uh, remove years of possible trial and error trying to make a go of a passion project that you pour your heart and soul into, hoping it'll make money, but ultimately never see a dime from all of your hard work. From personal experience, I can tell you how debilitating that can really be, especially for creatives, since it's in our DNA to put so much of our heart into our work. So as I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, it was my intention to do a deep dive on that book. And as I start to put together the show notes and everything and the outline for this episode... I realize that there's much more I want to say and share on the subject of Ryan's book and specifically how it can be applied to creative, creative entrepreneurs. So with that in mind, keep an eye out for the next episode of the podcast, which will be episode 13 coming out next week. And uh, to ensure that you don't miss it, uh, I highly recommend that you uh, like the podcast, that you subscribe to it, uh, whatever podcast player you're using if it's iTunes or Spotify and that way you make sure that you don't miss it when it goes live but that will be coming out next week also if you found value in what I'm sharing I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd rate the show and leave an honest review I welcome all feedback so moving on to the focus of this episode the inspiration for this episode came from my uh, free audiobook and pdf 57 ways to monetize your gifts as I mentioned at the top of the episode here, you can access that at the website, getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift. So for today's focus, I'm going to talk about the power of communication, more specifically, how to communicate what you do verbally to someone in person and how to do it in 15 seconds or less. Now, I realize we live at a time right now where we are all using all types of vehicles in which to market ourselves. We're using social media. We're doing Facebook, Instagram, all of those great tools, and they're wonderful. But oftentimes, we, if we, especially if we're more prone to wanting to rely on technology, we forget about one of the most powerful marketing vehicles that we have at our disposal, which is our presence and our voice. And when you're connecting with someone in person, live at a conference or say a networking event, what you say and how you say it and who and how you respond to the question that we all get asked at these types of meetings, not even at business meetings, but even at just parties or events or gatherings that we go to with uh, friends or family members. When someone asks what we do, how we respond can play a vital role in how people respond back to us. What I want to make the focus on this particular episode is around how to communicate it in a way that it actually elicits the person to want to know more. Typically what happens is that someone asks what we do and we'll just maybe say a one word answer. I'm a painter, I'm a lawyer, I'm a sculptor or whatever. And sometimes that's enough to get the person that's asking the question to ask more questions. 
But sometimes that's just not enough. And I feel we miss out on a great opportunity to really educate someone about what we do, how we do it, and who we serve. And you can do it in a way that doesn't necessarily sound like a commercial, but it does have a way of drawing out the person that actually would want to know more, or perhaps someone comes to mind that they might know that would be of interest in the service or product that you provide. So what I've been doing on Instagram, I'm very active on Instagram and you can connect with me there at uh, get, I'm sorry, <laughs> creatorpreneur podcast. And I have the link inside the show notes here. Um, you can, I've been posting a lot of uh, infographics or not infographics really, but um, graphical memes, if you will, uh, sharing excerpts from the free book that I've offered you here uh, as one of my sponsors, and it's one of the one of the gift items that you can get your hands on. So I've been sharing little quotes and things from that ebook on my Instagram feed, and actually the one I posted just yesterday actually inspired this episode of the podcast. So I want to do a deep dive a little bit and show you how you actually can craft your own what I do statement in a way that elicits a, a response that goes deeper than just. Oh, okay. <laughs> and no one asking you anymore about what you do or how you help or how more to the point, how you can help them. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to share that inspirational quote and you can see it actually on in my Instagram feed. Also on the show notes for this episode at get paid for your creativity.com forward slash zero one three for episode 13. So the quote is number key number 33 from the 57 ways to monetize your gifts, free ebook and audiobook, And it goes like this. If you can't say what you do in under 15 seconds, you're not clear on what you can do for your clients and they can't say yes if they don't get it. Got it. Now, I wrote that when I wrote that statement, I I did it because I, I, in, really in response to a lot of conferences that I attend where um, most of them have some type of an open mic session. So the speaker on the stage will invite people to stand in line and, and, and ask the presenter a question as it relates to the focus of whatever the topic was the presenter was sharing. First of all, if you are, you know, bold enough to do that, I applaud you because it can be a little intimidating to stand in front of a room full of people and ask a question that you might feel makes you look maybe not as on top of things or as bright or whatever the case may be, which is all nonsense. But um, it's a really great opportunity to actually share in front of a room full of people what you do, who you serve, and how you serve them. And not in a way that sounds salesy or pitchy or whatever the case may be, but in a way that actually presents you and to, and to an audience that could potentially be some of your clients in that room. And the same thing can happen whether it's a local networking event or if it's, like I said, a gathering, maybe a chamber meeting or whatever the case may be, or at a larger conference where maybe you have to travel to and you pay for. What I have found attending these types of events is that, and it's it's really all nervousness. It's not that someone is trying to be chatty Cathy or they're, they're, um, they're not trying to be uh, rude or anything of that nature. That's not about rudeness, but what it really is, is it's nervousness. And so, um, what will happen is that you'll go up to the microphone or you'll introduce yourself and nervousness will make you start to overshare, tell t too much backstory and explaining why you do what you do and how you got into it and all this other kind of thing. And I have seen actually at some conferences where the presenter will actually cut them off and re basically redirect them to get to the point and to ask the question that they came to ask. So why I want to create this, uh, how to create your own, what I do statement in a very succinct way and how to deliver it in under 15 seconds is that no matter what situation that you're in, if you are given the opportunity 
to present yourself, introduce yourself, let's say in the context of a conference, you can do this very quickly, very on point, and then ask your question, whatever that might be. And the people in the room, if any of them has an interest in what you do, they'll approach you on the break or what have you. And it's actually, I would say, it can be a huge missed opportunity if you don't do this, but also if you go up to the mic and you decide to share and you don't have this prepared and thought out, you're missing out on an opportunity too. So it's just as, it's just as it works against you either to sit there and say nothing as much as it is to go up and say something, but then you say all the wrong thing and the person or the receiver doesn't, they don't hear you because you're rambling and going on about all other kinds of things that doesn't really lean to the point of why you're presenting and introducing yourself. So I wanted to, I wrote that again, I wrote that quote in response to what I saw as a trend where people, again, and I feel like it's strictly out of nervousness. They just ramble on about things. They tell too much backstory without setting up any context for why the person would want to know more. It's not that no one's interested in your backstory. You just can't lead with that because they haven't built that connection to you. And that connection to you begins when you explain, guess, or, or share what you do, who for, and why they want it. And I'm going to break that down in this episode here today. So... I want to give you, I create this sort of as a simple framework. It's only three steps to it. And again, the goal is to share your statement or reveal your statement in a way that inspires the right listener, the right person, the one you really want to work with to approach you to learn more about what you do and how you serve. Now, before I get into that, I want to set up some context on how to think or rethink your what do you do statement. If you know anything about copywriting, the, any copywriter will tell you that the most important piece of copy, whether it's a sales page or an email or whatever the case may be, is going to be your subject header. The subject is going to tell the listener or, in the, or the reader, if it's, it's a, if it's written in an email or on paper, or in audio, if you're speaking it out loud, your headline is going to tell or, or trigger or elicit the reader, the listener, to go, uh, I want to know more about that. I've already had an interest in that. The way that they verbalize it is going to make me want to know more. So I want you to think of your what you do statement as your headline. It's the thing that you say very clearly and succinctly, and you say it in a way that the person that's ideal for you perks up and wants to know more. And there's a secret piece to this that I'm going to share in a moment that actually will tie this whole thing together and really make your headline, if you will, in this case, your what you do statement, very clear, very succinct, and call out the right people to you. Now, I want to use an example here. I want to use, since we're talking about creatives and creative entrepreneurs, I want to use for an example here um, for, I'll say, a watercolor painter, and more specifically, a watercolor painter instructor. Now, if I were to ask you at a party what you do, and your response to me is, I'm a painter, and that's all you say, that could fall flat for me because my next response in my mind is, well, what kind of painter do you paint houses? Do you paint paintings? Do you paint portraits? Do you, what do you paint? But if you just say I'm a painter and you say nothing more, I may not be curious enough to want to deep dive and ask you more questions. I might, depending upon the context and the room and the and where the gathering and where I am. Now, if I were at a gathering, say, with a room full of other artists or creative types, and you said you were a, just a paint, you said you were a painter, and that's all you said, my immediate assumption would be that you are an artist and you paint something. 
Uh, but if I'm at a, say, a general business networking type of a thing where I don't really feel like the, the overall room is filled with creative types, I could think, well, you paint houses, you paint what? I don't know. And if you don't offer any more information and I don't feel enough a connection to you to want to ask more, I could just go mm, and keep moving <laughs> or I'll ask more if I want to know more. But that makes it feel like I have to draw it out of you. And that isn't very attractive. So when you craft a, a really well um, crafted what you do statement, you're telling me what you do. You're telling me who you do it for. And you're telling me what I'm going to get or that the person that you serve is going to get as a result of working with you. And again, there's a way to do it where it doesn't sound salesy or pitchy or anything of that nature. All right. So if let's take it a step further, let's say I ask you, what do you do? And you say, I'm a painter and an art teacher. OK, that gives me more context. Those words would entice me to then ask, oh, well, where do you teach? OK, you give me enough information there that I, again, could ask you more. But that again, again, that still may not be enough because, again, it depends upon the room, the context, the environment where you are. So, as I said a moment ago, in order to for your what do I do statement to be truly effective, it must accomplish those three things. It must tell the listener what you do. Yes, you're a painter, you're an art instructor in this context or a painting instructor, but it also should say for whom. Who is the person that you do this primarily for? And then well, I'll tell you, I'll answer that first. And then I'll tell you the third step, which is the one that really ties the whole thing together. So if you say that I'm an artist and painting instructor that specializes in teaching seniors. Okay. That gives me even more context. Now I know what you do and who you do it for. Now you can erase seniors and put in whatever stay at home moms. You can put in, uh, you know, uh, elementary school grade children. You can say an adult, you know, you could say adults looking for a hobby or whatever. I mean, but you have to give me something that I can then tie some reference to, or again, speaks to the possibility that, Either I may be interested in that particular because I'm your target audience or I know someone who is. Because, again, the person that you're talking to isn't going to always be your customer, the final customer. We all know people. So I may have a parent that's been looking for a uh, take up a new hobby or I know someone that has a friend whose mom or dad is a senior and they've been looking for something to do. And I hear you say that that you're, that you do this and this is who you work, who you do it for. And then that would elicit me to ask, Oh, great. You know, I have a friend that, you know, has a mom that has been looking to get into something more creative and express herself more creatively. How do you teach your classes or where do you teach your classes again? So that then breaks into a, a step now to have a conversation and maybe you can say, well, you teach locally, but you also teach online. If I know that the person that I'm thinking about that could be a fit for your service, I could think, well, you know, they're pretty computer literate. So I think this could be a good fit for them. Then if you give me a card, I can then pass that on to the person that I know that would be a fit for that particular service. Now, what if the person that you're talking to, let's say if you say you do this, you do, you teach painting for seniors and I'm not a senior and I don't know anyone who's a senior. The next question could be, do you work with anybody else? Because if I have an interest in painting, but I'm not falling in line with your target audience person that you're talking about in your statement, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a dead stop in the conversation. The person won't go any further with you. So if I have an interest in painting or know someone that is, I could then ask the question, Oh, do you work with other people? And then you can respond back to if you do or if you don't, or you can recommend someone. 
So again, it's all the point of all of this is to get the conversation started by, by giving the listener, the, 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 the responder or the listener to your question, to your response, saying in a clear way, even if it's calling out a target audience that's not them, still doesn't mean that they don't have potential referrals for you or that you don't or you can't work with other people. You may specialize and have a course already in in the works for seniors, but you also work with kids or you work with stay at home moms or you work with fill in the blank. So don't feel like you're limiting yourself by picking a target audience. You want to pick a target audience, but it does not mean that the only people that will ever want to work with you has to fit into that target audience. And if they don't, you don't work with them. You might, but you may not. But don't fear not saying it because you don't want to eliminate someone who could be a potential fit for you. OK, so we're going to take it a step further. In order to really round out that statement and make it really clear, we're going to say what we do, who we do it for, and we're going to wrap it up and tie it all together in a nice little bow by answering this last asking this or addressing this last part of the statement. You can say, I am a, I'm going to use our painter again, and I'm going to drill down even further and say, I'm a landscape artist and painting instructor. That's the what that specializes in teaching seniors in this context, the who. And then the last part of it is so that they, and what you write after so that they ties it all up, ties it all together in a nice little bow. So let's read the whole statement out. I'm a landscape artist and painting instructor that specializes in teaching seniors so that they can get over their fear of painting or not being artistic and express themselves artistically for the first time. Now, if you hear someone introduce themselves that way, first of all, you'll stand out just because you actually you answer the question you said what you did but you said who it was for and you shared the result and that the end of that so that and the finish the completion of that statement ties everything up together makes it nice and clear and it makes you stand out when you respond that way because there's no question about what you do who you do it for and the result they walk away with and that's the, the, the crust of what makes a clear 15 second. So what do you do statement really clear and attracts your ideal audience to you. Now I'm going to give you a few other examples here and then we're going to wrap this one up. Let's go with a copywriter. A more effective, um, let's see. So in a more effective, what I do statement could be, I write copy for online online course creators so that they can get more students to sign up for their classes. I write copy. That's what I do for course creators who I do it for so that they can get more students to sign up for their classes. That's the result. I teach what you do painting for seniors. That's who so that they can learn how to paint landscapes with confidence, even if it's their first time picking up a paintbrush. Okay. You see how much more powerful that, so that statement, so that you complete that it really, and you have to, you know, massage it, but you can work it in a way that, because again, the result that you're saying, you're not making it up or pulling it out of your, you know, backside. You're actually sharing a result that your students get or that your customers get. You're not making it up. If you worked with people, you know what the result is. So share that so that people then get the whole picture of what you do, who you serve, and the result they walk away with. So again, the breakdown is what you do. And I'm going to put this actually on the show notes page with a breakdown so you can see exactly how to answer those three questions. What you do, you're a copywriter, landscape painter, vegan chef, self-published author. And in regards to your ideal customer, ideal audience, 
for whom? Seniors, new moms, stay-at-home dads, first-time job seekers. Who do you do this? Who do you work with, basically? And then the final piece of resistance is so that they can or so that and then fill out that. Being the result. Find the job. Learn how to paint. Spend more time with their kids. Fill in the blank. Now, if you haven't figured this out already, your what what I do statement is more about the customer you want to attract and less about who you are. Because again, we all want to know no matter what question we ask, especially if we're asking the question, what do you do? What we really are asking is, what do you do? What can you do for me? No matter what it is, we all want to know what's in it for us. It can sound selfish, but it's just the truth. We want to know what's in it for us. So if you tell me and if you craft your what I do, what I do statement, well, you will answer that question. And then that opens the pathway for you to then have a deeper conversation with that prospect who could then become a client or customer or refer you to someone who is who can be. Let's give some more last examples and we'll wrap it up. I'm a vegan chef that teaches reformed meat eaters how to create tasty non-meat options so that they can prepare meals quickly and affordably. Another option for that for a vegan chef is I'm a vegan chef that teaches people. Now, people may be too general, so you could change out the word people and say busy executives. Working moms, working dads, people with kids that work and don't have time to make food every day. I'm a vegan chef that teaches fill in the blank or people considering veganism as a lifestyle choice if you want to keep it general. So I'm going to start this over. I'm a vegan chef that teaches people considering veganism as a lifestyle choice that have so they have a lot of options for creating tasty non-meat alternatives so that they can prepare flavorful meals quickly and affordably. Okay. Whatever you ultimately decide on what this statement is going to be, write it out and then speak it out loud repeatedly until it becomes by rote in your memory so that you're not having to read from a card when you're ever out at an event, a party or any kind of gathering or just talking to someone in line at the grocery store or at a concert or whatever the case may be. You can say what you do in a way that introduces you, who you serve and the results you give. And you can say it naturally and clearly and succinctly and do it in 15 seconds or less. All righty. So if you would like to share your revised statement with me, I'd love it if you would send me a DM, a direct message on Instagram, and I'll respond with a personal audio message. I really wanted to spend more time on Instagram. I like Instagram a lot. And again, you can connect with me there. The link is going to be here in the show notes and uh, share that with me. Uh, Write it out and I'll respond with an audio uh, response to your uh, to your statement. So again, go look at the show notes on getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 013 for episode 13. Use that three-step framework. Answer those questions. Try crafting out a couple of iterations of your what I do statement. If you feel comfortable, share it with me on Instagram by direct message me. I will respond back to you. And that's what I have for you today. So I'm so glad to have you on the uh, podcast. This is episode 12. Uh, We just crossed our two month mark. So 60 days into the podcast. This is episode uh, 12. And I might have said 13. And I, you know, I just realized that. (laughs) I just realized I might have said 13. I'm thinking 13 for next week's episode. So if I, I don't want to edit this out. So I'm going to just say it out loud. The, uh, the show notes for this episode is episode 012. I'm so sorry. Episode 12 for episode 12. Episode 13 is going to be next week's episode where I'm going to be talking about my um, my findings from the book Choose by Ryan Levesque. So again, uh, the episode show notes is going to be episode 12. Get paid for your creativity dot com forward slash zero one two for episode 12. 
And then episode 13 coming out next week will be on the Choose book by Ryan Levesque. I'm also going to have a link inside of the show notes for episode 12 uh, to how to where you can get the book on Amazon. If you do decide to pick up the book on Amazon, do let me know that on Instagram as well. And perhaps I might be able to get Ryan on a future episode of the show. So again, I want to apologize for if I've said show notes for this episode is episode 13. It's not 13. It's episode 12. 012 get paid for your creativity.com forward slash 012 for episode 12 and i'll see you next week for episode 13 where we will deep dive into the choose book by ryan levesque wherever you are today i hope you're having a wonderful day and that you rock it out make something happen and again share with me on instagram i'd love to connect with you there have a great day take care bye bye We have entered the age of creative self-employment. In the new economy, people are creating true security for themselves. That's why I believe there has never been a better time in history to monetize your gifts. So if you're ready to take control of your financial and creative future, I have something for you. It's my free audio and PDF program, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. And you can get that at my website, getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift.